Hallelujah. May the name of Jesus be glorified. What a mighty God we serve. 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 I say what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. We serve what a mighty God we serve. How we praise and lift him high. How we praise and lift him high. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this great opportunity you have given to us to learn under your footstep. We pray, Lord, that you will help us. Help us, Holy Spirit, help us to understand your will. The Bible makes it clear that in your word we can learn what you want us to do. Give us that grace to understand your will in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise. We give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. May God bless every one of you that is online. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May God bless you. Want to thank God for your life, for being online this hour. I know God will do a new thing in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Want to bless God for your life. The Evangelist Mabel, Evangelist Gift, Sister Alabi, Online Dinerio, or Sister Vera, Yemi Ikemefula, God bless you, Sister Yemi Ikemefula, Best God's Power, God bless you, Sister Loretta, you're online, God bless you, Amen. Gift, Sister Gift, God bless you, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Sister Ajumobi, God bless you. Hallelujah. May God bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. Sister Best God's power, God bless you. You are blessed. So we are going to start this hour by the special grace of God. I will know that God will bless us tonight. Sister Evelyn, God bless you for coming in. Amen. Um, if you have not been following us on our Bible school in terms of relationship, Please start from one, uh, the, 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 the number one aspect of it. We're on the third day, we are discussing about relationship, and I pray that God will help us so that we can be able to, to fulfill that which God wants us to fulfill in Jesus' mighty name. Let us start. I want you to bring out your Bibles. If you uh, bring out your Bible, it's very important. Bring out your Bible. This is mine. This is my Bible. May God bless you. And I want you to open to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14. God bless you as you come online. May God bless you. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14. Please open to your Bible. We are going to look at one or two places in the scripture. I want to start with 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14. <clears throat> you can write it down. Amen. Now the Bible says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers do not be unequally yoked together 
with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what communion has light with darkness? God warned us here that we should not be yoked together with unbelievers. Uh, it's a warning because there is no connection between a Christian and an unbeliever. Now, um, for those ones who have not been following us, please go to our previous video. We have discussed a lot. I have given, um, I have given um, uh, advice to those who want to get married, those who are, you can get your husband, those who are already married, those who are divorced. But I will still be bringing one or two of them back. If you have any question, you are free. God bless you, Sister Tessie, Sister is it brother Sam, the brother Paul Jr., God bless you. If you have any question, you have the right to type the question. We are here to learn. If you are confused, ask me, Pastor, come back, repeat what you said again. You are free to type so that we can learn. Praise the Lord. We are here to learn the mind of God. And remember, I'm here to teach you the standard of God. The standard of God cannot be diminished because of you. Or they cannot lower it because you are in abroad. Or you are in America. You may be watching from America or you are in Africa. No. The standard of God remains the same. So that is one thing you put in the back of your mind. So tonight, I will be open to you. I will do everything possible to tell you the truth. Nothing but the truth. Hallelujah. So what you do for me right now is to share this video for those ones who have not been aware we are online, share the video right now. Do that and God will bless you so that they will be aware that we are online. Hallelujah. Share the video that uh, some people that wants to benefit from this message. You know, I may not be having the full time to discuss, to share it in such service. So, but God will help us. I will be taking it gradually. For this purpose, I want to take time to teach concerning marriage. Amen. So we have been treating on relationship, we have been treating on uh, marriage, we have been treating on uh, courtship. So for today, I want to start with 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, which says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. What is yoke? A yoke is something that, an anchor, a yoke is something that holds you and without, you cannot separate from it. A yoke is something like a chain. For instance, when you see double chain like this, this is a yoke. When there is a double chain like this, you cannot separate it. That is called a yoke. Now, a yoke can be something that they put on someone's neck as well. But what I'm trying to explain to you, for you to understand that whenever a man and a woman comes together, you are yoked together. You are glued together. It's very, very important you understand what a yoke signifies. So a yoke is something that glues you together, make you to, I mean, holds you together. It will be difficult to break loose. So the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. The Bible warned you, don't be yoked together with unbelievers. There is no agreement between you and that person. Don't be yoked together with unbeliever. Who is an unbeliever? Now, let me make this word clearer to you. Do you know that um, if I'm from another religion, if I'm from another religion, I can tell someone from another religion you are an unbeliever. An unbeliever is someone that does not believe in what you believe in. That is the simple way I can explain to you. An unbeliever is someone that does not believe in what you believed in. Now, Bible said, don't be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. Before you get married, you need to sit down and discuss between both parties what you believe and what you didn't believe on is very 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 important there are some men that have a different belief in terms of how to treat their wife 
Some men may believe that their wife are house girl. My wife, you don't have a say in my family. Some men believe in, in different things than, you know, something funny. Some women also believe in something different. So if any man does not believe in your dream, if any man you want to marry that does not believe in your dream, in your goal, that man is an unbeliever to you. At the end, both of you will have a problem. There is a story I had. A man was, I think it was a, the woman was the doctor and the man was doing another job. So bo both of them married. They barely see the time this one is having, coming in from the house, they, that is the time the other one is going out from the work. That marriage can't work. If you want to get married to someone, you need to understand what he, he believes in. Apart from believing of the Bible, you need to know whether he's a Christian, what are his, uh, you know, what are, what are the things he believes in and what he, he do not believe in. It's very, very important. But the area I'm directing it to, any man that does not believe in you cannot be your husband. Any man that does not believe in you, any woman that does not believe in you cannot be your wife. Some women will use this word, look at you you are just nothing you have no future that woman does not believe in your dreams any woman that does not believe in your dreams may not have a future with you so this is what both of you ought to sit down and discuss what do you believe concerns me it matters a lot so the Bible said, do not be yoked together with an unbeliever. An unbeliever is somebody who does not believe in you. Do you know that some people get married, they don't even believe in their wife. They don't even believe in their husband. They don't even believe that they can be able to make it in life. They don't believe. That person does not have the same vision with you. Both that marriage may crash at the future. So if you are getting married... You ought to get married to somebody that have the same goal with you, that has the same future with you. There are some women, they marry a poor man. But when you're asking them, why do you marry this poor man? They say, I know this man will make it tomorrow. The man don't, may not have a job now, but you say, I believe in this man. I know that things will be well with him. He may not have a job, but he has something here. He may not have a job, but he has he have a handwork. When that woman believes in you, that is the first step. Apart from you need to marry a Christian, which is the first priority. If you are getting married and you, you find somebody who is not a Christian or you are making a big mistake because at the end it will always backfire so what am i trying to put across tonight a lot of people marriages has been broken because one when you don't believe in that person you are getting married to that marriage will not last you are getting married to somebody that is leading you and you don't believe that he knows the way how can you get along with that person there will be confusion on the way. So the first thing you do, you must believe in your man. You must believe in that woman that is your wife. No matter his present condition, you must believe that this man can be something tomorrow. Listen very carefully. Believe that man even when he is nothing. I was looking at the picture of Obama and the wife. How young he was then. But Obama had a dream. The wife stick close to Obama until he fulfilled his dream. There are many people that you see your man because he don't have a job. That is when you leave the man for another person. That is not true. God may ask you to go and marry somebody that you, I mean, somebody that is wretched does not mean he can't be rich tomorrow. Does not mean he can't make it tomorrow. All you ought to do is to believe in that person. No matter how, how the situation may be, just be the, be, if nobody believes in him, be the one that believes in him. Let people know that this man, 
I know where he's going. Understand where your man is going. Understand his vision. Understand where he's called. I believe that that is the first step to choose a better man or a better wife. Praise the Lord. So, the advice I have to give you on this aspect, don't look at now to judge a man. Don't look at now to judge a woman. You may be looking at a woman or a, a man presently now, you have concluded on him, no, it is wrong. You need to look beyond that man. Look beyond, there are some men, when they will be telling you, I want to become the governor of my state, they will be laughing. But that is a dream. A dream must always come true if you follow it. Hallelujah, God bless you. A dream must always come true. Don't look at the present. Whenever you want to date, you want to uh, marry somebody, don't look at the present. Look at the future of that person. Ask God to reveal his future to you. And if you can see his future, you will not be judging him with his present situation. Hallelujah. Look at um uh, uh, um Kenaland, uh, what is his name? O Oyedipo. I heard of his story how wretched he was. Very wretched. I heard of his story. But look at him now. Look at him now. I had, if you look at some of these people that have made it in life, if they tell you how, they, 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 how the, their yesterday looks like, you, even you, you can't get married to them if you cannot see their future. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to give this advice to everyone that is watching this video and that will watch this video. If you are into a relationship already, Please, you are you already married, believe on that man. Believe his vision. Every man has a place he's going. The only problem is this. When the man don't have capital, you think he's a fool. Every man know where they are going. Yes, I'm telling you the truth. Some of the men are frustrated today not because they don't know where they are going. If you give them capital, they can make something out of it. Believe in that man God has given you. Now, if you are about to get married, you are not yet married, listen very carefully. If you have a man in your life, ask him, what are your goals? What are your visions? Listen, a man's vision needs to be bigger than him. A man's vision needs to be bigger than him. Any man that have a vision of um, of today does not have a tomorrow. Everything the person is talking about now, now, now. That man, he needs to tell you what he ought to be in the next 10 years. In 10 years' time, what do you want to be? It's not a wrong question. Before you enter into marriage, this issue should be settled. What do you want to be? What handwork did you... Which type of handwork did you can you go and learn or which what did you have in you what are the stuff you are made up up of let the man tell you let the woman tell you this is the reason why you need to keep on uh, 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 you need to keep on investing on your life keep on investing on your life it's very very important praise the name of jesus christ please can i quickly put this across don't marry an unbeliever I'm telling you, you will regret it. Now, who is an unbeliever? There are many definitions. You know, everybody today is a Christian. So I will not tell you an unbeliever is this or that. But all I have to tell you, an unbeliever is that person that does not believe in Jesus Christ. That is the first definition I will give you. Anybody that does not believe in Jesus, anybody that does not believe in the things of God, my dear, run from that person. That person is, is, is something else. If you are a Christian, the the, that person must believe in the God you serve. And he must be ready to serve that God with you. That is, that is the time the person is a believer. But if the person is an unbeliever, run from it. And there are a lot of, there's a, quest, there's a, a word women always make most time. They always say, Pastor, don't worry, I will change him when I marry him. Listen to me. You can't change a man. If a man is a smoker and you say, I will change him when I marry him, he's the one to change you. I'm telling you the truth. So if you know that there are things that are wrong in the life of your man, I want to use the word man. I don't want to use the word boyfriend, but man, 
you have not yet married to him, if there is something wrong with him, that before, before that ring comes to your hand, please, I will come to that, God bless you. Before that ring comes to your hand, take that man to deliverance. Make that man to be rooted in God. This is the first advice I have to tell you. Listen very carefully. Don't marry a man that does not know the word of God. You will, you will suffer it. First of all, let that man love God. Take him to church. Make him to be a part of the church. Make, train him. Tell him, listen, I cannot marry an unbeliever. I cannot marry a man who cannot pray. I cannot marry a man... Okay, imagine that there is problem in the house and the man will not be cannot pray you want the woman to pray is wrong hallelujah so before that ring goes to the, your hand prepare your man for that wedding prepare him for the marriage so likewise the women man prepare your wife for the wedding listen let me make this word across to you if you say you want to marry you must disconnect from every other man i'm talking to the women now disconnect from every other man the women the men disconnect from every other woman in terms of relationship there are some women that wants to marry but they are still having concubines outside you are deceiving yourself some men wants to marry they are still having some white girls outside that cannot work it cannot work make sure that you you make your, I mean, you prepare yourself for this marriage. Hallelujah. Prepare yourself for the marriage. Now, before I go on, let me answer the question of a sister that asks, what about a husband who always lie to his wife? Now, let me quickly tell you the truth about lies. Listen very carefully. The reason what I want to tell you about lies is this. Hello? Any man that lied to you, that man is afraid of you. Any man that lied to you, that man is afraid of you. Note that. Put that in the back of your mind. Any man that lied to you, he's afraid of you. So make that person to be comfortable with you. Make that person to be comfortable with you. When you make that person to be comfortable with you, let him know that no matter what you hear, you cannot react to it. You will see that that man will always tell you the truth. There are some men, if they know that telling you, the woman, the truth, fire will come in the house, he will not tell you. Because the previous one, he lets you know that uh, you know something happened between him and the other girl. You flamed up. So what am I trying to say in a nutshell? You need to understand that you, you, you are the one that makes the man to lie. Bring that man to your dust, to, to your heart that, listen, no matter what, let me know the truth. When you make that man, when you give the man assurance that even though you sleep with a girl outside and I ask you, tell me and I will forgive you, watch, that man will always tell you the truth. That, that is the reality. Because, you see, anybody that lies is afraid. Lie, they, 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 I know that there are people that lie for, for fun. You know, that, that may be their nature. But I'm talking about husband and wife reaction in terms of lie. If I know you are my wife, I tell you the truth, you will react. I will not tell you. And you will find it as a lie. It's better you kill me that it didn't come out from my mouth that I, than I tell you and it brings problem. That is the way it is so i encourage you bring that man close let that man have confidence in you that no matter what you will not flame up you will always be at the side of correction let me give you for instance imagine that um imagine that your husband have something to do with his ex-girlfriend maybe the man is married he's an the, the guy is not strong maybe the ex-girlfriend came around they had something to do and you get to understand that something transpired and you ask him who is that girl what happened tell me what happened now tell me what happened now or i will scatter this house i will break this house my dear for peace to reign the man will tell you nothing happened 
and you know you know the truth already the truth is that you know that something transpired but the man will never tell you but if you bring the man down sit him down honey please um there is something i found out don't lie to me i want to know i don't want somebody else to tell me and let us make a way out of it you you begin look when when once you begin to reg, he, he begin to regain confidence in you he tells you the first one you didn't slap him or you didn't you are not to you are not offended to that extent watch the second he is the one to, he, he may even commit sin and come and tell you he may even commit sin and without you even asking him because he have regained confidence in you so what am i trying to say sister that asked the question i believe you're online if you're online just say yes so that i will know you're online hallelujah what am i just trying to say make your man comfortable vice versa make your woman comfortable hallelujah praise the lord make your woman comfortable who is this please praise the lord make your woman comfortable allow don't give that place of war whenever your man knows that there will be war he will he will be strange to you listen marriage is supposed to be issues of friendship it's supposed to be friendship it's not supposed to be a war zone there are some family when you enter in that family you will see a you will see there did these people on these people are on third world war yes but when you have that mindset of friendship we are we are brothers we are friends we are husband we are wife you know you are my wife you are my husband there will be a platform of discussion listen there are some family that they don't have anything like discussion whenever there is discussion that whenever there is discussion uh, before the end of that discussion there will be trouble so the the both parties we we avoid discussion which is not good whenever you get married to a man that you don't understand there must always be problem in the home try your best to put that man as your first son listen men let me tell you no matter how big you are no matter how big a man can be he is a child in the hands of the woman i'm telling you the truth no matter how tough a man can be a little just a woman can bring him down look at how great samson was very great that with a jawbone he killed one thousand soldiers just a small delilah a small woman could capture him so what am i saying men are very fragile you can get your man i'm talking to the women now i also refer to the men you can get your man but the women most times one they may not be understand they may not be understanding the man number two any woman that talks too much you argue too much i'm talking likewise to the men in this case because there are men that talks more than women you are you don't have the platform of i mean discussion it is every time you shout you quarrel you argue you, you i mean you you bring out fault a little fault hey who poured the water on the ground why didn't you sweep here why didn't you do this you will see that there will be collection in the family there will be trouble it will it will be a war zone let that man come back that when he comes home honey are you back please i prepared your food eat go and take your bath please just rest rest on the bed my dear that man wherever he is he will be looking for he will be look you'll be looking at the time when can i come home i'm having a vip treatment in my house the women will say pastor why can't the women the men do the vip treatment to me yes it's vice versa is vice versa i'm talking to the men as well listen when will you just tell your wife honey stay on the bed what do you want to eat let me do it for you children i will take care of them you cook you do everything you massage your wife you tell him where is disturbed where which area is paining you you say just sleep today and listen try it once a week or twice a week you will see that something will change in that home i'm telling you the truth you see the problem we have is that we always look for the negative part do you know that do you know that that man that is that man that is going outside to friend another girl there is nothing 
you have she that one don't have her. the only difference is how you carry your man oh my man they go outside my man they go outside check yourself how you carry him matters a lot if you carry him as your king and you carry him as somebody that you that you cannot do without watch him he is going to take you as a queen now vice versa the men listen let me talk to you don't take your woman as a house help my mother the the the, the, the children the 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 how why will i put it please help me the mother of my children you are stupid you man if you are taking the, the, the your wife as only the mother of your children he's not just there to make children for you he is there to have a communication to help you there are other areas give, give make your woman a queen make her that queen yes that thing you are looking for outside is inside is it beauty she's not she before you married her i know you know she's beautiful so why going outside the one you have at home if you can invest in that woman at home i'm telling you the truth she will be the best queen you ever think of there are some people there are some celebrities in nigeria i do look at their picture i laugh you know i why the reason why i laugh is because your wife is even better than all those celebrities you are hailing. Oh, beautiful Genevieve, beautiful this. Your wife is more better than them. That is the truth. Most of you, you are better than all those celebrities. But the truth is this. Please, learn that manner to put your husband as your own first son. I'm telling you the truth. Any man you put as first son... In fact, sometimes carry that man, carry him. If he warrants you to carry him, watch that man under a week. You will see that man will definitely change. See, that massage is receiving with another girl. Massage him on the bed. Ask him where he's paining him. You want to massage him. Now I'm talking to the married ones. I'm not talking to those who are dating. Please, the close your ears is not for you. Hallelujah. The married ones I'm talking to now. Praise the Lord. Please don't sleep, oh. So I'm trying to explain to you is that make your house comfortable. Make your house comfortable. Ask your husband, which kind of soup do you like most? List all the things he loves to eat. My dear, if your husband knows that there is a delicious soup at home, he will not eat at the restaurant before coming. Hallelujah. If your husband knows that, that you have already prepared that, that bed, I mean, you are just waiting for him to come inside so that both of you will enjoy yourself. That man will not go to the, another girl. The, the reason why most men go to another woman, I want to tell you, listen very carefully. Whenever you are stingy with your body, Men will always be angry concerning that. They will look for alternative. Women, I'm talking to you right now. The Bible said the day you get married, that your body belongs to your husband. I mean, your body is your husband's property. You don't take excuse when you want to use your property, do you? No. You only, as a woman, you only explain to the woman, and in the way the woman will understand, it should not be by force, but with proper explanation, I think everything can be handled. What of if a woman who carries her husband as a king? Uh -huh. Okay, you didn't complete your statement. Praise the Lord. So, what am I... Please, don't laugh. Oh, this is the reality about marriage and relationship. It's very, very important. Hallelujah. Daddy, I bless you, sir. God bless you, Daddy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, now listen. I have answered the question of that sister. Sister, I think your question is answered in terms of the man that always lie. How can you handle him? Sister, if it is answered, just, just tell me yes before I go into another thing else. Because we have a lot of things to discuss this hour. I have just simply explained 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Do not be 
unequally yoked with an unbeliever. This is not a laughing matter. It's not. It's not. God bless you. Hallelujah. See, if you can treat that man VIP treatment one week, the man will double his own. Just give him a VIP treatment. I'm telling you the fact. What kind of man that we hear that the wife is waiting for him on the bed will not run, run, run down home? That man, that man, even though he's a devil, he must run down home and, and become an angel. I'm telling you, draw your men to your, to your palm. Look, you already have the man. Don't throw him away. The more you restrain him from, from, from you, I mean, from having sex with you, from discussing with you, if he comes at home, your head will boil. It will be as if the, 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 this word is coming down that man will always run what a what a woman who carries her husband as a king but her husband is always lying and and hiding things from his wife now sister sister merit i think sister merit now let me put this across number one let me put it from this angle if your husband is a chronic liar you can change him not to lie do you know how you do that don't suspect him anymore. Listen, listen. The more you suspect a man, the more he hides things from you. What did I say? Don't be looking at the negative part of a man. Be looking for how to win that man. The problem we are having is this. Listen, the problem we are having is this. If, if you are having problem with your, your man or rather your husband, you should look for a way to win him, not for a way to attack him. Are you getting what I'm saying, Sister Merit? What are the things you can do to win him, not to tell lies? That should be the answer. That is where the answer lies. If it is for you to not to be asking him questions, don't ask him anymore. What you ought to do is to show him true love. See, do you know that men have conscience? Women have conscience. There is no man, even though he is the, the child of a devil. What if you tell your husband to do something for you and he refused? Very quickly, listen. If you tell your husband to do something for you and he refused, do for him. His conscience will, his conscience will judge him. Let me tell you, everybody in this planet Earth has conscience. When once you do not, when once you do not, you, you take side, the negative side, things will get worse. What we are looking for now, how can we make things to work out? My advice, what I'm giving all of you today is advice. My advice to you is look for a solution for the, the solution of that problem not to attack the problem if he asks you to do something he refuses don't worry be doing for him one day his conscience will judge him and i know what i'm telling you there are some men that if they know that they, they have done something bad to you they, they can look at your face because of their conscience is judging them one day they will come and tell you sorry that thing you said i should do for you i didn't do it I'm doing it. It may take time. It may take time. And another thing, it depends on the manner of approach. There are some women, if you do not buy this gold for me, you will not sleep with me again. Doing it with command may be very bad. Your body belongs to your husband. Vice versa. Your husband body belongs to you. You do not, you do not hinder, resist your husband except during the period of fasting according to the bible if you know you are a christian you want to follow the christian principle that is the truth about it praise the lord sister alabi i think i have made a little point god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you now i want to talk about um god bless you god bless i want to talk about something that is very important something that is very important there are people that goes to africa please listen carefully there are people that goes to africa to get married because they don't have document 
and they will tell their parents, um, I want um, my sister to stand for me. You know, they will say they want their sister to stand for them and uh, for them to get married. You know, it is wrong. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is what? Wrong. If you are, if you want to um, get married, please go and let your parents bless you. It's very, very, very important. Anybody who, have, who wants to get married, maybe you are in Europe, you send your sister to stand for you. It's your sister that they are blessing, not you. I will prove it for you from the Bible. And this error has been made severally. A lot of people have made such an error. Listen, post this video to anybody you know that have made that error. If you want to marry and you ask your sister in Africa to stand for you, maybe in your husband's side, the brother will stand. Or even your husband can even go to Nigeria and your sister will stand for you and that marriage will be done on your behalf. That when they are, It's your sister that is receiving that blessing, not you. That is very, very important. Put that in the back of your mind. You are not the one receiving the blessing. Now, I will prove it to you from the Bible. You know, Esau and Jacob, Esau and Jacob, they, you know, we know what transpired, that Jacob took his blessing. He wore the, a skin, animal skin, and said to the father, I am Esau. And the father blessed Esau, but his hand was upon Jacob. Did you get it? Read that place in the Bible. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. The father blessed who? The father blessed Esau. But because he put his hand upon Jacob, the blessing was transferred to Jacob. You look at Isaiah, um, Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27. It's very important. Genesis chapter 27. Now, let me start from verse 14 for you to see something there. So he went and took them and brought them to his mother, and the mother prepared the delicious food, such as his father loved. Then Rebekah took the best garment of Esau, her older brother, which were with her in the house, and put on him. Now he put it on him, which is Jacob, her younger brother, 16. And the skin of the young goat, you know, uh, she put on his hands and the smooth part of the neck now 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 now, now. rebecca gave joseph the costume of esau listen listen 17 and she put the delicious food and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son jacob so he went into the father and said father my father and he said here i am who are you my son Jacob said to his father, I am Esau. Listen, Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. The person that was present was jo uh, Jacob, but he said, I am Esau, your first son. Now, Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your first son. I have done as you have told me now. Sit up and eat of my game, that your soul may bless me. But Isaac said unto his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? He answered, Because of because the Lord your God granted me success. 21. Then Isaac said unto Jacob, Please come near that I may feel you, my son, to know whether you are really my son Esau or not. So Jacob went near to Isaac his father, who felt him and said, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are, is, are the hands of Esau. And he did not recognize him because of the hands were hairy like, like the brother Esau's hand. So he blessed him and said, You are really my you are are you really my son Esau? He said, I am. Then he said, Bring it near to me that I may eat and that I may eat of my son's game and bless him. So he had brought it near to him, and he ate, and he brought him wine, and he drank. 
Then his father Isaac said unto him, Come near and kiss me, my son. So he came near and kissed him, and Isaac smelled the smell of the garment and blessed him and said, What am I trying to teach you? Listen very carefully. When you send somebody to Africa to stand for you for blessing of marriage, that blessing does not go to you. The blessing goes to that person that was blessed. That blessing does not go to you. So in the other way around, if you use your sister to do traditional marriage, you are not the one that did the traditional marriage. According to Esau and Jacob issue, that is cleared. So I want to warn everyone that is sending people on their behalf to do marriage. You have not even done it. You will, if I will advise you, go back and get the blessing back. Because your sister is the one that is blessed, not you. That person that represented you is the one that is blessed, not you. Is there anywhere I can show you some picture above what my husband did to his wife? <sighs> you can post it through, you can inbox it for me later, please. You can inbox it for me. And I believe if there is a, a domestic violence, um, I, I would advise that counseling should be involved. If there is domestic violence, counseling should be involved. Sometimes it can be spiritual. There are sometimes demons will enter into a family to cause confusion. So sometimes we know whether it's spiritual, we know whether it's uh, the, the man purposely, out of hatred, wants to beat the wife. So it's very important whenever there are domestic violence, you try your best to know what is the issue. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. What of the husband that doesn't show love to his wife and he claimed that he loved her? Okay, I will handle those issues. Sister Alabi, just give me one more time. I will handle the issues. Let me just round up with this issue um, I have at hand. Please, warn everyone that goes to Africa to marry, to, for people to represent them, tell them that they are not yet married. They ought to redo that, that, or to be blessed. Maybe they should go and be blessed by their parents. Remember, the blessing of parent matters most. Is very, very important. Amen. God bless you for that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, um, please, I think you are blessed by this word of advice. If you are blessed, just write yes, so that I will know that you are understanding what I am teaching you. Praise the Lord. If you know that you are blessed by this one I have explained, write yes, so that I will know that you understand what I'm teaching. So let me talk to Sister Alabi. I think uh, Sister Alabi said um, also a husband who have peace. Praise the Lord. Okay, um, Sister Alabi, let me take your own force. Sorry, sir. What of the husband that doesn't show love to his wife? and he claimed that he loved her now my advice to that woman is this she's already married what we look for now is solution and we need to handle the issue through prayers if the woman does not love you but he's claiming that he loves you listen first of all find out why he's behaving like that if the fault is not from you then go on your news sometimes the problem we have in our marriage comes from us sometimes so my advice is that put that man in the hand of god i love proverb 21 verse 1 the heart of a king is in the hands of god like a river of water he directs wherever he pleases see is that man bigger than God? That guy, that man, is he bigger than God? Except you didn't wed him. Except he didn't pay your bride price. Except he didn't take you to court. The truth is this. If he, if he, he have done any of this, he's under a covenant. He's going nowhere. And pray for love. Pray for love in your marriage. Listen, sometimes the man will get tired of you. Basically, maybe you have born one or born two and the way you dress. Maybe before he married you, the way you always dress, you dress flashy. But now you have one child or two child. He's not looking at you as somebody 
somebody um uh, you know somebody who is now getting dirty so know the reason why he's always doing that if his default is from you listen be go to your the, the down part of your box get your latest clothes and be put it on even on the bed the latest clothes listen bring make it you are the one who need to be attracting him not the people outside that is the truth about it the first thing is that if the man love is what is weak please activate it. you know how to activate it the first time he, he met you I, I i think his head was boiling bring his head back again to boil put yourself in order organize yourself you will see that that love will grow back again and most especially don't have a third party in your marriage i warn you no matter who you you you, you called your best friend every best friend always turned to best enemy i'm telling you the truth don't have a best friend the enemies you have today were once your friend yesterday don't have a best friend hallelujah yes yes god almighty bless you for opening many women eyes okay god bless you sis the dickiness ngozi god bless you for that thank you very much oh this is the reason why we are here amen hallelujah so now i want to i think sister the sister i i, I that asked asked me a question i've answered sister labi please my advice to you is check if the love of that man is not is not catching you again maybe you are doubting that he didn't love you change your style change your wardrobe change your hairstyle change the way you cook change everything you will see that his love will come back again I told you the other time, love increases, love decreases. The Bible says, time shall come, the love of many shall wash cold. So love can get cold and love can get hot. What will you, the issue should be, what will you do for me to bring this man back to that love? Forget about other girls outside. Let them try. They will fail. But you have the responsibility to activate that love. If it is you are not doing your hair, go to the best saloon. If it is the, you know, you are getting dirty and the guy does not have, get the attraction every time. Go down your, go down your box. Get the latest cloth and put it. Make his hair to go gaga. What are we talking? You have all the whole thing you can do to bring that man, you know, to a life again and you are there. I am telling you the truth. You must do it. That is marriage for you vice versa the men if you are no longer attracted to your wife please brush up brush up is very very important brush up hallelujah amen sister alabi just tell me yes if you understand what i'm talking just if you know you are blessed by that advice just write yes i want to see if you are not if you are not yet satisfied write no so that i will continue we are stopped amen God bless you. Let me, um, Sister Emanuela, you are blessed. Okay, no, sir. Don't worry, don't worry. Now, let me come back. Listen very carefully. If that man is your man, note that the first day he knows you, he loves you. Listen, the question should be, what should I do to bring him back to that original love he has for me? I think that is what you want to hear. Now, I want to give you one of the key. Change everything that you have been doing that is wrong. He believes is wrong. Listen to him. You say, ah, you always do this. You always do that. Change those things. You will see that that man will come back to his senses. Hey, look, life is all about change. Let me quickly tell you, there's something women always do that men, I'm a man, which which you don't understand the first day the man met you you were flashy but now you are you are now married you are now becoming you are now a tiny rapper you know one rapper for two weeks my dear know that the man have eyes oh don't take him as a a, a a married man like that he still have eyes blood still run in his vein make him attractive make his hair go gaga Cook the best obolo soup for him. If it is what he always like, cook it for him and give him to eat. Call him to the bed. You don't allow him to be calling you to the bed. Tell him, honey, where, what are you doing there on the, on the dining? Come on, let's go to the bed. That is your responsibility. Yes. Make him to be happy. 
go and try it. Maybe tomorrow or next you will give me a result. God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. So, um, um, Sister Best, I think I have answered the Sister Labi question. Before I go further, let me answer the next one. Which one? Which one? Which one? Sister Merit. Also, a husband who have peace with his wife just because his sister they are having problem with their husband your own husband will tell you from today you will no longer have peace with me ah, ah, i don't understand this question <laughs> now listen the little i can understand your sister merit you are saying that if a man uh, also a husband who have peace with his wife just because his sister uh, they are having problem with their husband okay a man have peace with his wife the sister of that man is having problem with their husband the man will say you will not have peace in <laughs> that man need to go for deliverance that is the truth let's leave any other thing take him to a deliverance minister sister merit take that man to a deliverance minister because he him himself he need deliverance that is the only advice i have to give you is if it is because the sister is having problem in their marriage and he says you you will have problem take him to a deliverance minister that this one is done i will not tell you be wasting time to pray maybe there's a demon in his head that is the advice i have to give you on that please so if you understand it you write yes so that i can carry on praise the lord uh god bless you god bless you God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. So, is there any other question to answer? Okay, Sister Best, what if you are some, what if you are somebody that fast few days every week and the man doesn't want to understand you? Now, listen, can I explain to you? Something about fasting need to do with you and your husband. That is the truth. Know that the man is the head of the family. Call him. Make him to understand what you are doing. Now, it depends on the days you are fasting. If you are fasting 6 to 6, my sister, there is no problem. Give him what he wants after 6 to 6. That is the truth about it. I'm talking to Sister Best. Based on the question you ask, give him what he wants after 6 to 6. He is not a tree. He is a human being. Uh, if you are doing dry fasting, seek maybe two days dry from Monday to Tuesday. Ask him, wait, after this Monday to Tuesday, give him what he wants. Will you prefer him going to sleep outside? That is the first question. If he is no, give him at what he needs after six to six. That is the truth. In fact, the Bible said that uh, 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 you know, both of you must agree on it before you even fast. Both of you must agree on it before you fast. If both of you are not in agreement of it, God will not even answer your fasting. I'm telling you the Bible. Praise the Lord. So, Sister, best God's power. You said no, I don't know. Did you, what, what do you mean by that? Help me out. Write, let me understand what, what you mean. Please. So my advice to you is give him what he needs after the fasting. So if I did not get your question well, write it down so that I can explain it in detail. I can explain to you in details. Praise God. God bless you, Sister Manuela. God bless you for that. Amen. I still have a lot of things to discuss with you here. I still have a lot of things to discuss with you here. Uh, don't laugh. Oh, this is marriage issue. It's very. You must say it as it is. That is the truth. Do you know what many people are going through in their marriage? Is that they, a lot of people are crying? Why? L let me tell you. The men, if you are in the house, please just write yes. I have an advice to give you. The men, if you are a brother in the house, write yes. Let me know you are in the house. Don't hide. Don't hide behind this video. Just write yes. If you're a brother, you are listening to me. I want you to write yes. You are very right, sir. That is what the Holy Bible says. Yes.
Praise the Lord. If you are a brother in the house, right yes, I have to give you an advice. Ah, brother, my own son, you are here. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. If you are a man, it's not as good as you when we talk for fasting and prayer. If the man is not as good as you when we talk for fasting and prayer. Now listen, can I talk to you, sister, God's power? Listen, do you know that your obedience can bring your husband to faith? Women in general, if you can be submissive to that man, I want to teach you something about most of the problem we have in the family. What is, is caused by one, one, two, three things. Submission is number one. See, let me tell you, even though you fast, eh, let me make this clear to you. If your husband wants to have sex with you and you tell him I'm fasting, even though you fast and pray to God, that prayer is not answered. I will show you in the Bible. Praise the Lord. Now, the men, I want to talk to you. Listen, you must understand, this thing came to my spirit to advise you. You must understand that Adam was looking for a helper. Adam was not looking for a sex mate, a, a sex slave. Adam was looking for a helper. He was not looking for a sex slave. He was not looking for a house girl. Adam was not looking for a house girl. Though. It was not a sex slave. So men, know how you treat your wife. Your wife should not be your sex slave. When she's sick, you're on top of her. When she's not sick, you're on top of her. When she's fasting, come on, wait, you're on top of her. You Are you crazy? Is it, is it how a, a man without self-control needs deliverance? Now, I know what Sister Best God's power is talking about. I understand what, she, what she's talking about, but I don't want to answer you to your own taste. That is the reason why I'm answering you the other way around. But men, if, if it is your husband is here, I could have tell him what I'm saying right now. Put it so that he will hear it. Any man without self-control is, is like an animal. Men should have self-control. Self-control. When your husband, wife says she's tired, understand she's tired. Is she, is she, is she your house, house girl? Is she your sex slave? Please. You see, mutual understanding matters a lot. Understand when your wife is tired. Understand when she's fasting. Now, Sister Bess, don't take it as, as an honor. You tell your husband he's a stupid man. No. When I see your husband, I will tell him myself that he should have self-control. Praise the Lord. So, men, I want to advise you. We know that truly, truly, we are always in the mood, 24 hours. But can I quickly tell you, that woman is not a sex toy. It's a woman being like you. Treat her, the Bible says, treat her as yourself. That is my advice. I know if you you know you will threaten her if you don't give me I will go outside. You are, you are sorry any man who is threatening the wife to go outside you don't even love your wife. You don't even love your wife. So I encourage all the men understands their wife. Sister best my advice to you is make your husband to understand you if he fails to understand you give him what he wants after fasting instead of going outside that is it if you they do six to six before do and six to three god will still answer you the six to six prayer and six to three god understand so far as you satisfy your husband simple the reason one of the reason why men go outside is because they are not satisfied inside See, whenever you satisfy your man inside, I'm telling you, he will have less to do with women outside. Where is the strength? When you have draw all his strength, you have finished him. You finished him on the bed. Which, which mouth will he use to toast another girl? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. So right now, if you have any question, I want to thank you, Deaconess Ngozi. God bless you for that. If you have any question, you should bring it down so that I can answer it. So before I have a lot of things to teach you, what is the time now? Ah, ah, we are after 12. God help us. If you have any question, please let me know. I have a lot of things to teach you, please. I'm waiting. If you have any question, let me know. I'm waiting. There's no question. Now I will go further. Let me go further now. Amen. Now I want to advise you. Listen carefully. There are three ways to legalize your marriage. But I will treat that one from tomorrow. Three ways to legalize your marriage. I will treat that one because of our time. I cannot finish it this night. A lot of people want to sleep because they are going for work. But um, let me put you give you this issue this um last one before it's an error to fast and forget your husband sex can be agreed upon and your husband knows before you start the fasting program please okay god bless you thank you thank you my son god bless you amen so you can take the advice from there let me give you one major problem that always one key you can use to make your your marriage work the first key which I found out is if you can handle or manage your anger. Anger. You see, the reason why a man will file for divorce or a woman will file for divorce, the whole reason should lie on anger. Anger. If you can handle anger, there is nothing you can't handle. You can handle your marriage. If you can handle anger as a man, you can handle your marriage. Praise the Lord. I want to show you a scripture. Let's open to Ephesians chapter 4. Let me show you something in Ephesians chapter 4. Let me use this to round up because tomorrow I will start in a, with another topic entirely. Are you in Ephesians chapter 4? I want to read verse 26. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Or rather on your anger. Be angry. Do not sin. You see, there are some women, when they are angry, they will begin to break all the whole things in the house. Go for deliverance. You are possessed. Spirit of destruction is in you. If you are that type, when you are angry, you will be looking for television to break. You will look for fridge to destroy. Go for deliverance. If you are a man, you are also doing that. Go for deliverance. Be angry. Do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Now, can I talk to you? Listen very carefully. God permits us to be angry so far as we didn't sin. But our anger should last for 12 hours. Whenever your anger go down, the Bible says, do not allow the sun to go down on your anger. Whenever you allow your son, the sun to go down on your anger, sin is becoming involved in that anger. A lot of women, if you make problem with your wife in the morning, before evening, settle it on the bed. The problem we have is, we are, it's very difficult for most men or most women to say, I am sorry. I am sorry is the healing word. For if that word have been said, I am sorry. So 90% of the marriages could have not hit the rock. You see this word, I am sorry. It should always be on your lips as a woman or as a man. Be angry. Do not sin. 
do not let the sun go down. If you allow the sun to go down on your anger, listen to me, you are committing a sin. Some of you, you keep malice with your husband. The same man in the same house, you don't talk to him, and you say you are a child of God. Look at 1 Corinthians 13, it says, Love does not provoke, it's not envy, it does not exist in its own. I will read those places for you tomorrow concerning love. So when you are telling somebody I love you, you will truly know whether you love the person or not. Sisters, I am putting this across to you. Ask God to handle your anger. Brothers, ask God to help you in terms of area of being angry. Though any day you are, you are angry, you know your husband offended you and you keep malice till the next day you have committed a sin. Yes. Don't you know malice is a sin? Malice is what? A sin. Don't allow the sun to go down on your anger. Don't allow the sun go down on your anger. If the sun goes down, that means the next day you are already a sinner in the presence of God. Please, I encourage you. Let it go no matter what. Know that the journey between you and that man will not end that day. It's still far. Put everything behind. Live the life of Whatsoever that have happened, I have forgiven. Make a new way. Have a new focus. When you have a new focus, you will see that you will, you will enjoy your marriage. Now, let me put this across. When you get angry, that man you call stupid man, foolish man, oh, idiot, this, that. After two days, is the same man that will sleep with you. Are you not the fool? You are the fool. So instead of abusing the man, telling him stupid, idiot, or vice versa, instead of abusing the woman, telling him her, uh, that she's idiot, she's this, she's that, tomorrow you come and beg her, let us have sex. You are the fool, not the woman that you abused. So because of that, don't, don't allow the sun go down on your anger. Don't sin when you get angry. Yes, you have the right to be angry. You have the right to ask him, why is this thing like this? Honey, I don't like it. Don't do it again. Yes, when, whenever your mind comes down, say, honey, I'm sorry for shouting for you. Sorry, let's make peace. And it should end there. May God bless you. In Jesus' name. I will allow every one of you to go and sleep this night. But I want to pray for marriages before we go and sleep. Amen. I mean, if you are blessed, if you are blessed, just write yes, I'm blessed. If you are blessed, write yes, I am blessed. Okay, write yes. Don't write I'm blessed. Just write yes if you are blessed, please. Let me know those who are blessed tonight. Just write yes. If you know you are blessed, please write yes. I'm not seeing you. Your writings will tell me whether I should continue or I should stop. So if you know you are blessed, write yes. Y-E-S. Yes. Hallelujah. Before I round up, God bless you, Sister Doris. God bless you, Sister Omoye. God bless you, Sister Labi. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Alice. God bless you. If you know you are blessed, write yes. Okay, only these few that are blessed. I'm very happy. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Ah, Sister Loretta, God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Best God's power. God bless you, Sister Melody. Evangelist Mabel, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Now, tomorrow I want to teach you something about where you can legalize your marriage. And I want to talk about divorce. It's very, very important in the kingdom of God. Please, tomorrow I will start. Tomorrow is, um, tomorrow should be Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, thank you very much, Sister Gift. Sister Evangelist Eunice, thank you. God bless you. Thursday, I will be teaching you about marriage in terms of how you can legalize your marriage and how you can handle divorce. It's very, very important. Thank you very much. So, what you do for me right now, before I pray for you, just click share. Share it on your timeline. Don't as you do that, you do the work of God with me. God will bless you. There are marriages that are shaking. When they read it, when they go through it, you will see them being blessed. Just share it right now. As you share this video, God will bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. We are going to pray for our life, our marriage, our pray, our partners. Listen, that man is a human being. He may have fault. 
what you pray for him is God should strengthen him. Amen. Remember me tomorrow, I will talk about those men who cannot perform. What are the remedies? Please, I have to talk about it because in our family, we still have your husband may not be performing as a man or may not be satisfying you. What should you do as a woman? Vice versa. So I will talk about that. Remember me tomorrow. We don't have much time today. Just share the video. As you do that, God bless you. God bless you. Share it. God bless you as you share in Jesus' mighty name. Now begin to pray for your marriage. Ask God to keep it. Ask God. The Bible says, if the Lord will not build, guide a city, those that are guiding are guiding in vain. If the Lord do not build a house, the builder build it in vain. Ask God to help you. That this marriage will not break. Ask God to keep you. Just pray for yourself. Ask God. Say, Father, help me in my relationship. Help me in my marriage. That I will make the best out of it. Pray for yourself before I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, ask God to help you. Yes, he can do it. Ask him to help you. Ask him to help you. In your marriage, in your relationship, ask him to help you. He can help you. Open your mouth and pray. Say, Father, this marriage will not break. It will not hit the rock. I pray that your grace will be sufficient. Give us love. May I love my husband as never before. Let that love come back again. Put a new wine in our marriage. Let it start spring up again. Lord, help me to love my man. Help me to love my woman. Just talk to, just talk to God about your marriage. Listen, the devil has a plan to destroy marriages. That is one of his aim. He started it in the Garden of Eden. He will not see yours to destroy. Pray for your marriage right now. Pray for your relationship right now. That God will make it compatible, suitable for you. Pray right now, even as I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for your marriage, your relationship, it will work. According to the will of God, I ask that God will strengthen that weak marriage. God will increase love. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the hand of God will be upon that relationship. The will of God will prevail. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray by the authority in the word of God, that the God in whom I serve will make things to work again. We change the life of that man that is that hates the, the wife or dislikes the wife or the love is getting cold. God will change him. We pray that the Spirit of God will make that marriage to become alive. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for you in Jesus' name. Makatuli Brademo Soko Tolikata. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for you. Your marriage will not break. The plan of the wicked will not prosper over your marriage. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now there's what we call home breaker, marriage destroyers, relationship destroyers. They will not cause havoc to your marriage. Open your mouth and pray that God will protect your marriage. La Kata, your relationship is in the hand of God. Libra du mazida gamahinda libros e. So kotolika talama kunta ribrahanda. God will keep this marriage in the name of Jesus. I pray that home breakers will not break this home. The peace of God will reign upon this marriage. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Libra de mosoko tolega malika Zupra tata tamara pashanda rima zokotolo pokutele molokotori mama hande in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Amen. Lastly, I want you to pray on your marriage. Ask God to bring fruitfulness and prosperity. See, when there is prosperity in your marriage, fruitfulness, you will not feel. You, I mean, things will move well. Ask God to bless your husband. Ask God to bless your wife. That blessing will abound in your family. Pray for the fruit of the womb if you are asking God for one. Ask God to bless you. Open your mouth and pray in Jesus' mighty name. 
Makata la boseke mahira. Libra de mazoto lo poshekete. Inka prakata malakatu sokoto. Zutata brakata tata malikata. Zokoto re prakata la musokoto ya. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that it will work again. It shall work again. In Jesus mighty name I pray. Mandoro posheke magade. Fruitfulness is upon that marriage. Blessing is upon that marriage. In Jesus mighty name I pray. Amen. I want you to pray that tonight you sleep. That the spirit of God will protect you, your family. There shall not be any bad news over your life, over your family. Pray and cover your life with the blood of Jesus. I soak you in the pool of the blood of the Lamb. I pray that the coverage of God will be upon you, your husband and your children. That evil plan of Satan against your marriage will not stand. I declare the will of God upon your life in the name of Jesus. Rebo sun tarabaye. Zakuku Malika Tarabasanta in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for you. Rakabayaga Mahanda. In Jesus' mighty name that I've prayed. I pray for love in this marriage. I pray for unity. I pray for peace. I pray for understanding. I pray for willingness in this marriage. In the name of Jesus. One heart, one love, unity in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray for you wherever you are, hearing the sound of my voice, that your marriage will be the best. It will not crash. Your wedding, you that is believing God for wedding, you God will provide that money. God will equip your husband to wed you in Jesus' name. I pray for financial breakthrough. I pray for the blessing of God in your marriage. I pray you that is already married, that you are having trouble in your marriage. God will bring peace. Every storm and tempest, there will be peace in Jesus' name. I ask God to help you in every of your weaknesses. God will help both of you to amend your ways and to live right as husband and wife. We stop every spirit of confusion in that family. That spirit of confusion we arrest that demon. We bind that demon. We cast to the pit of hell. The grace of God is upon your family. The blessing of God is upon your family. In Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your favor. Thank you because I know you are doing a great thing in this family. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you all. As you sleep tonight, sleep under the umbrella of the Holy Spirit. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. They will call your name. Fire will answer them in the name of Jesus Christ. You are protected. Peace be upon your life. Thank you very much. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you, sister. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for being around. May God bless you all. In Jesus' name, if you are a woman, you are married, show your husband tonight you love him. If you are a woman, you are married, this night, show your husband that you love him. It is an assignment. May God bless you. Thank you for being along, around with me. You that have not even seen the pastor, but you believe the grace upon his life, thank you very much. Sister Alice, come to church. God bless you. Thank you for being around. Tomorrow by 11 o'clock, I'm coming back. I want to start in a different dimension, which I know God will bless you with it. If you have any question, please bring it. We are going to handle it. If you have any question, bring it. I will see how we can handle it. I have a lot of scriptures to open to you, but I want to take them gradually so that you get to understand it. If you have been following us for the first time, go to our previous video. This is the third, third video on relationship. We are doing our Bible school online. Go to our previous video. Go through it. Write notes. Keep your notes. It will really help you. And practicalize it on your husband or on your wife if you are married. May God bless you. Thank you very much. I love you all. Jesus loves you most. What you do for me is to share this video. Tell a friend about it. Download it. Post it through WhatsApp. Let people get it. Because many people are languishing. They are crying. Download it. Post it through WhatsApp. Let somebody be blessed by it. And God will really bless you as you join me to do the work of God. Thank you very much for your 
patient being around till this point in time. May God be with you. May God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. If you are around Milan, you can come and visit us, fellowship with us. Please, it's very important. Hallelujah. And um, for those ones who, uh, who are asking for my number, for those ones who are asking for my number, this is my number you can use to get me. And uh, as you do that, we can talk about counseling. I can counsel you. If you need my counseling, I can do that. Thank you and God bless you. My name remains Pastor S.O. Divine. I love you more. Thank you very much. In Jesus' name.